radioisotopes, radioactivity, radiation, nuclear chemistry, call it what you will, this is a topic about energy coming from the nucleus of atoms. Strictly speaking, it isn't chemistry at all. Take an element such as hydrogen, for example. Now, ordinary hydrogen atoms, the most common atoms in the universe, are these. That particular hydrogen atom, happens to be called protium, is very simple. If we look at this, it tells us it has one proton. If it has one positive proton, then this atom must have one negative electron. And with a mass of one, mass of one, that mass of one is this proton, it has no neutrons. This atom is not radioactive. However, if we need a different hydrogen atom out there, and this one exists, this one happens to be called tritium, it's still hydrogen, it's hydrogen because it still has that one proton, one proton, one electron, well let's work out this thing. What does the three tell us? This three is the protons and the neutron, neutrons, it's got one proton, we know that, it must have two neutrons, therefore, there. This one is radioactive. The nucleus of this atom emits radiation. Why? Put simply, it's down to the proton neutron ratio. The ratio of protons to neutrons. Some combinations are stable, the atom does nothing. Other combinations are highly unstable and the nucleus tends to disintegrate. A well known example of a radioactive element would be uranium. Uranium has many different isotopes. Here are, here they are. Uranium-235, Uranium-238, Uranium-239. Uranium is in box 92 of the periodic table. Why? Because its atoms have 92 protons, which means its atoms must have 92 electrons. Looking at the numbers here, the difference between these numbers tell us how many neutrons we're dealing with. This one has 143 neutrons. This particular combination of 143 neutrons and 92 protons is unstable, making this isotope of uranium radioactive. In fact, all of uranium's isotopes are radioactive. They all have unstable proton-neutron ratios, or neutron-proton ratios, as some people call them. Now, when an atom emits radiation, what's actually happening? This diagram is supposed to represent the nucleus of an atom. The, the circles represent either proton or neutron. And as I've already established, certain combinations of protons and neutrons are unstable. Let's say this one is unstable. This, this is an unstable atomic nucleus because of its proton-neutron ratio. If something is unstable, it follows at given time, it will become stable. And this particular atom will become stable by doing one of three things, by either emitting alpha, beta, or gamma radiation. Let's look at alpha radiation first of all. You may have heard of alpha. Alpha particle. An alpha particle is a little piece, a little fragment of this nucleus which has been ejected at very high speed. We can't tell when it's going to happen, but at some moment, this will kick out this little piece, this little fragment of the nucleus. We can tell what the fragment is like. We can see from our diagram, this little fragment has two protons, two neutrons. Because it has two protons, this is effectively like a little piece of helium. It's, it's what the nucleus of a helium atom would look like. So we give it a symbol HE. It has a total mass of 4, 2 protons and 2 neutrons, gives it a mass of 4. It has an atomic number or a charge of 2. And it has an overall 2 plus charge. Remember, these protons are positively charged. There. There is our alpha particle. We don't use the bother to write the 2 positive charge in, but it is there. As I say, it's a little fragment of the atom. Let's suppose we had a an atom which emitted alpha particles. Now, you'll find information about alpha, beta, and gamma radiation on page 8 of the data booklet. 
I'm consulting page 8 and I can see examples here of alpha emitters. So how, for, how about, for example, if we take an isotope of the element thorium. Now thorium is element 90. You'll find it in box 90 of the periodic table. This particular isotope is thorium 232. And it tells us in the data book that it's an alpha emitter. Meaning it's unstable and when it changes it emits, it ejects, it kicks out an alpha particle. There it is. There's our alpha particle. The question is, what does this become? Well, we can see it's ejected an alpha particle with a mass of 4. So the mass will go down by 4. It will no longer be 232. Take away 4 means the new mass is now only 228. And not only that, the atomic number has changed. It had 90 protons to begin with, but two of them have been ejected. It now has only 88 protons. We can't write that because it's no longer thorium. This is wrong. It's no longer the 90th element, it's only element 88. And if you look up your periodic table, you'll find that element 88 is radium. There, it's really quite simple. If a substance is an alpha emitter, so you write down in the fact that it emits an alpha particle and see what it means. What are the other options? Well, we have alpha emitter, we have beta emitter. According to the data book, certain particles, certain nuclei, become stable by ejecting a beta particle. Now what is a beta particle? Well, surprisingly, highly surprisingly, it's an electron. This is very surprising, to see, because there aren't any electrons in the nucleus. A nucleus is made from neutrons and protons. So where's the electron coming from? Well, it comes out at high speed. It's ejected at tremendous speed, and consequently could do some considerable damage. But what's the source of this electron? Well, what has happened is a neutron, one of the neutrons in the nucleus, has suddenly changed into a proton. And when the neutron becomes a proton, as a consequence of that, this little electron has been ejected. We can write a little equation to show this. We can see, look, here is our neutron. Here's a little neutron. We can't tell when, but at some moment in time, it decides to become a proton. Let's look at the numbers behind this. A neutron, little m, has a mass of 1 and a charge of 0 has decided to become a proton, which also has a mass of 1. But the proton has a charge of 1 as well. Well, you know the rule, you can't have an unbalanced equation. So in order to balance this, in order for it to make sense, there must be something else. That something else can't have any mass because the mass is already balanced. So whatever this mystery object is, it has no mass. But in order that the overall charge comes to 0, this will have a charge of minus 1. Plus 1, negative 1, comes to overall 0. And the only object we can think of, which fits the bill, is an electron. And there's our beta particle. This beta particle, as I say, has been ejected when a neutron became a proton. What it really means is that when you see beta radiation going on behind the scenes, there's now an extra proton. There's no change in mass. We had a mass of 1, and there's still a mass of 1. But while the mass of 1 a moment ago was a neutron, now it's a proton. There's one extra proton. Well, how does that manifest itself? Let's have a look. If we look at page 8 of the data booklet, we can easily find many examples of beta emitters. How about down here? I'm told here that radium, this particular radium isotope, that's radium 228, the very one, the very one I ended up with here, radium 228, is a beta emitter. What does that mean? It means when it becomes stable, it emits a beta particle. It kicks out one of these little electrons. There it is. There's the beta particle being ejected. The question is, what do we have now? Is it still the same thing? Well, no. This cannot lose an electron and be exactly the same. There's no change in mass. Because the electron that has just been lost has no mass. So whatever we're left with still has a mass of 228. But what about charge? The total charge here is 88. The total charge here will also have to come to 88 
meaning this will have to be 89. Why? What's happening here? We've created an extra proton. Remember, we said earlier on, a neutron has become a proton. There's now one extra proton. It's no longer the 88th element, but the 89th element. And the 89th element is actinium. You should be able to write equations like that. When an alpha particle is lost, we write the alpha and work out what's left. When a beta particle is lost, we write the beta particle and see what remains. Finally, what about gamma radiation? What is gamma? Well, gamma has no mass. It's not a particle. We wouldn't talk about a gamma particle. Gamma is just a high-powered radiation, a source of energy. Extremely damaging, extremely penetrating, passed through considerable layers of material. But if, I, if an atom, X, was to lose gamma radiation, it wouldn't become a different particle. There would be no change. So you're not likely to ever have to write an equation here because there is no change. There it is. Alpha, beta, gamma radiation. But one last point to make, and that is, you have seen that when an atom loses, when an atom loses an alpha particle, we go back two places in the periodic table. We, having lost two protons, we're going, in this case, from element 90 to element 88. So we go back two places in the table. You'll have noticed here that this radium 88 has become element 89. When a beta particle is lost, we go forward one place in the table. Now it just so happens that this actinium is also a beta emitter. Let's see what the consequence of that is. If this actinium, which is formed here, in turn emits a beta particle, where does that take us? Well, the total mass is still 228. But in order for this to balance, this will have to be 90. And look where we've ended up. We've ended up back in element 90. We started with thorium, went, went through this series of changes, but there's a difference. We might be back to element 90, but we're not back to the same isotope. We're not back to an isotope 2.2, we're back to an isotope 228. But the point is, an a, a loss of an alpha particle, followed by two beta particles, takes you back to the same element, but not the same isotope of that element.